safely his saints he sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how the Almighty hath been? Thou art and granted ordaineth. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper and mercy shall ever attend thee. Ponder on you what the Almighty can do, who with his love doth defend thee. Praise to Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, come, let us adore him. Our, hymn, uh, our psalm this morning is Psalm 29, and I invite you to join me with the odd verses. 
Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people, and the Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my, th my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A song of praise song of the three young men. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel of John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, 
No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us begin this afternoon in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week began with seeing the class of 2021 graduate. There is nothing more thrilling than to go through all the events, seeing these young people who have worked so hard graduate. Even particularly this year with the turbulence of the pandemic and all that's been going on in our nation, these young people completed their senior projects, they completed their academic work, and we sent them off yesterday. It was magnificent. It was a little cold, I will also add, but that only gave sort of a little more energy to that wonderful event. They were sent off with wonderful instructions from a variety of people. Go out into the world. Make your mark. Take what you have learned and share it. Make the world a loving and gracious place because of what you experienced here at Bard. Go out and be creative, be daring, be courageous. It's what we say almost every year at commencement. So it seems actually quite fitting that at this moment, as we come to the end of our commencement events, we are honoring those people who are part of the Bard community who did go out into the world, who did make their mark, who did courageous and daring things, who used their intellect, their creativity, their Bardian spirit to make their mark in the world. We've come full circle today because we're remembering how they have made an impact. And as I was thinking about coming to today and remembering these people who have made such a wonderful mark on the world through their experience at Bard, begin to think about the whole process of memory and remembering people. Why do we do that? Why do we feel this is so important? I suspect because how they impacted the world has not ceased. 
the mystery of it all is their contributions continue on in ways that we might not even know. And by remembering, we become part of what they've done. And in a sense, inspired to continue on the work that they have done. And what is some of the important work that they've done? I like to think that we all have been striving so diligently for the essence of truth. In that wonderful gospel reading, we hear that exchange between Nicodemus and Jesus. Richard and I were just talking. It's almost like an intellectual discourse going back and forth. But Nicodemus comes at night. He comes under cover of darkness because he knows that as he is seeking the truth, there is something so valuable, so overwhelming. And the truth ultimately is what is it that Jesus says? God so loved the world. God so loved the world. That is not some easy sentiment, but that word agape is talking about an active word to love, to change, to relate to empower. And that is what these people that we are honoring today did in their lifetime. They enacted a love that helped in the created order that God gave us. So as we continue in our service, think about each person as they are named and think about the gifts that they brought to each of us in this mystery known as community, but specifically in this beloved community of Bard. Amen. Our service will continue on page eight. For our departed brothers and sisters, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brothers and sisters eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promise paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brothers and sisters to the joys of heaven. Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brothers and sisters. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. First, I want to welcome everyone who has come here to the chapel and to all of those of you who are watching uh, remotely. Uh, this memorial service, for those of you who have never attended it, uh, is a tradition of the college that I suspect dates to its very founding as an Episcopal college. Uh, this is a memorial service designed to uh, remember those who have died 
in the past year since the last commencement. It is, um, for me, uh, after these many years, uh, among the more important ceremonies of the year. We have a terrible tendency to forget, and especially in the context of COVID, where the numbers of dead accumulate well beyond the normal rate, uh, we become inured uh, and desensitized to the loss of the people around us. And um, many of our rituals are designed to facilitate forgetting. And what I like about this particular service is that it is dedicated to remembering. I want to thank all the staff. Those of you who are watching don't realize that the pandemic has forced universities into becoming uh, somewhat like television and movie studios with massive numbers of sound people and video people. It's somewhat different from the simply holding your iPhone up and taking a picture. Um, we want things to sound and look well um, over the internet, and um, it takes a lot of people backstage, so to speak. There's also a tremendous amount of effort in adhering to COVID protocols. I'm pleased to say that those protocols are coming to an end in the state of New York. They've been particularly stringent and particularly stringent on institutions of higher education. You may read in the papers that people are around to gather and they could do so with masks or without masks. None of this was permitted in a university or college. We expect that by the summer, uh, we also will join the opening of uh, social and uh, political life in real time, in real place, without social distancing and masks. And so the conditions are very straining. And I want to thank Jane Bryan of the alumni office, Deborah Pemstein, and for their, the Vice President of Public Affairs for us, for organizing this event and uh, coordinating with the alumni and their families. I want to thank the chaplain, Mary Grace, um, for doing this service. As the chaplain, she serves both the college and St. John's Barrytown. Richard Aldis, who is actually was on sabbatical, uh, has come out uh, to help us in the service, and I appreciate that very much. And you will hear our organist, Rene Lupret, who plays wonderfully. And um, I want to thank all of those who have volunteered to participate in the service. The tradition is for me to read the names aloud. There is something about hearing the voice and seeing the lips move that gives credence to the memory. In some cases, I will simply read the name. In some cases, I will say a few words about the individual, not because there's any difference between the people about whom something is being said from the people who do not. It simply is that their relationship to the college was such that nobody provided extra information. Uh, for whatever reason, their lives hadn't been so continuously connected with the college, particularly if they were graduates from many years ago. Ned Adams from the class of 1951. Gabriel Asfar. Gabriel Asfar was a teacher of Arabic on the Simons Rock campus, and uh, he um, uh, taught there for over 20 years and uh, was a residence director and deeply involved in campus life and um, won one of the awards uh, that uh, Simons Rock gives out every year. You will see, by the way, a picture, those of you watching remotely of each of our uh, memorialized individuals. Victor Ban Banlilon was a political scientist of great distinction who um, participated in 2014 in a program that we do together with the State Department. Roderick Bromley of 19, class of 1968. 
Floyd Berger Sr. He was an electrician at Bard and um, known to many of us, especially those of us who live on campus, and uh, was an essential part of the B&G operation, the Building and Grounds operation. He was, as many of our colleagues in the Building and Ground, a proud veteran of the U.S. Navy, of the 156th Field Artillery, Artillery, and also of the New York State National Guard. Brian Callahan, from class of 21, was a student in the Bard Prison Initiative, and um, he did not get to graduate, but we graduate, but we conferred a degree on him posthumously yesterday. He was a math major. Uh, math is one of the preferred uh, majors among BPI undergraduates. And uh, his senior project was a mathematical model of road salt on the road accumulation in the lakes on the Adirondack. And uh, he was a very beloved member of the BPI community, and obviously with his friends and his family, and um, all of whom came forward after he died um, to remark on his exceptional wit. Malcolm Cecil, who was a Grammy Award-winning musician, audio engineer, producer, pioneer in the electronic art, of music with synthesizers and was a regular uh, visitor and participant in the um, electronic music program and a friend to many um, uh, students and alumni and faculty. <clears throat> uh, Tenant Glenn uh, Divitian and from the class of 1959, um, he um, participated with Rand Blake, who was from the class of uh, 59 as well, uh, in creating the so, 1958 Bar Jazz Festival, which has a kind of legendary status. Uh, and um, two other alumni were participant in that, Jonathan Tunick from the class of 58 and Jan Lee from the class of 1960. Uh, Terence Francis Doosnap, known to all of us as Terry, I first want to welcome here in the chapel his widow Kay and his son Ted. Kay actually was a teacher of my eldest daughter in elementary school in Red Hook, and Ted is a member of the class of 1982 and was one of the key people in the development of the Clementi programs here at Bard. <clears throat> Terry Dusnap came in 1963. He was a leading member of the Literature and Languages faculty. He retired in 2016. Um, so he had an extensive decades-long career. He was a leader also of the faculty, um, one of the chief architects and defenders of the AAUP, the American Association of University Professors, and he was um, an articulate um, defender, particularly of the compensation and rights of faculty. Uh, he was, um, his field was Irish and Celtic studies. He also helped found the Victorian Studies Program, and um, the Doosnaps lived, Doos, Doosnaps lived on campus, and they were um, a welcome destination for students and faculty. Uh, I won't be telling tales out of school that also a legendary poker game took place on a regular basis at the Doosnap home, in which I participated only once and had emerged so poor that I wouldn't try it again. But a beloved member of the faculty, um, a very visible and powerful figure in the life of this college for decades. Harold Donahue from the class of 1963. Judith Ann Drum from the class of 1964. Derry Dyer from class of 71. Kim Ellison. Kim was a member of our environmental services um, since 2005, and these services um, became um, indispensable and pivotal uh, as COVID struck, as the demands on them uh, became ever greater. And um, uh, she was um, really particularly beloved by students 
the environmental services have in many ways the most regular and constant contact with those students who live on campus. Andrei Emelianov. Um, Andrei Emelianov was a member of the Da Capo Chamber Players, a very distinguished cellist, and the Da Capo Chamber Players for many years have been a, um, a program uh, of musicians in residence. Um, he was particularly close to Patricia Spencer, who teaches at Bard, and above all, Joan Tower, who is one of the founders of the Da Capo Chamber Players, and um, she led it and played in it for decades. Barbara S. And Barbara S. was among the most um, well-known artists on our faculty, an extremely original and um, unusual, versatile artist, um, primarily in photography, where she dabbled in a way in the cross-section of the illusion of realism and abstraction. Her name, actually, she was Barbara Schwartz, but since there was another Barbara Schwartz of her own generation as an artist in New York, she decided she can't risk being mixed up with the other Barbara Schwartz. So S being the first letter of her last name seemed an appropriate way to rename herself and she became world famous as Barbara S. Um, beloved by students, a true original and um, she made a real lasting contribution to the photography program and also to the MFA graduate program. And um, she will be missed by um, faculty and students. There was a very fine memorial Zoom program that was organized by Stephen Shore uh, in her memory this year. Ryan Fabian from class of 1916. 2016, excuse me, he was an alumnus of the Bard Prison Initiative who had returned home this winter, and he was really excited about starting a new life. As a student, he also excelled in math and computer science, and he was looking forward to a career in tech, in the tech world. He was an active member of the BPI alumni community and um, known for his uh, good humor, good nature, and his sense of humor. Robert Fenz from the class of 1997, and he was um, a very well-known filmmaker and um, humanist. Um, he made uh, many linkages um, as a student and after with our colleagues, uh, with the musician Wadada Leo Smith and Peggy Awesh and the late Peter Hutton. He's mourned by many here at Bard, um, his family, his friends, and his widow. I want to welcome his family, who's watching online, and extend to them our condolences. Ashley Figueroa, from the class of 2022, uh, was a student in the micro-college program in Holyoke, Massachusetts, and which we hold with the care center there. She was kind and gentle, had many close friends in the micro-college community, and she wrote deeply about her faith and her own hopes for the future. Richard Britton Fisher was the son of Emily Fisher and Dick Fisher, um, both of them trustees. And Dick was chairman of the board, and Emily is now the vice chair of our board and the longtime chair of the Simons Rock Board. <clears throat> Um, Britain, as he was known, was a terrific father and husband and son, and um, both to his mother Emily and to his stepmother Jeannie. And he shared the parents' philanthropic support of the arts, uh, both for BAM and for Bard. He was also a passionate sports fan, the Rangers particularly, and um, he was active in numerous New York City arts organizations. Our condolences to Emily and to Jeannie and to the entire family, all his siblings. Marie Kanyemi from the class of 1969. Constance Goal uh, was a long serving member of Buildings and Grounds 
And she's remembered here today, and I want to welcome her, by Audrey Smith from the class of 1978, a colleague in the college. Jeffrey Gold is a former coach of the women's basketball team here at Bard. Marsha Goldfein. Marsha Goldfein is the mother of the late Seth, Seth Goldfein from the class of 1998. And he was killed in a car accident um, in, uh, during his undergraduate years. And uh, she was very devoted to the college. The commencement exercises, the tent is erected on the Seth Goldfein Memorial Rugby Field. <clears throat> Seth, Seth was an ardent rugby player. We remember today Vartan Gregorian, the president of the Carnegie Foundation, um, Carnegie Corporation as it's known. He was um, uh, first the um, dean um, and provost at Penn, where I first met him, and then he went on to be head of the New York Public Library and then President Brown. Um, he was an Armenian and had a particular affection, particular affection for Peter Surian, um, a fellow Armenian uh, on our faculty. And he was extremely um, supportive of Bard and particularly the Bard High School Early Colleges. His foundation, when he took over Carnegie, took on the cause of the Early College and we are very grateful for his generosity and support. William Dean Harnish from the class of 1997. <clears throat> Amy Heil from the class of 1990. Judith Ann Hyman from the class of 1954. John Henry, who was a senior scholar at the Levy Institute. Barbara Hurst from the class of 1952. She was a very loyal bargain. The class of 52 produced for some reason a whole cluster of very loyal graduates. Not all classes do that, and we have never figured out why that is the case. But I first met her as the president, and when I went to Chicago, she was inevitably the host of the Chicago area alumni meetings. She went to the Illinois Institute of Technology after graduating, and she went on to practice interior design. Barbara Markel Itali from the class of 1950, also a very, very loyal Bardian, um, a lifelong supporter, and she and her husband Ralph were, I think, at every reunion, um, and they also uh, came to all the Margaret and John Bard luncheons, which is the annual luncheon for those who intend to um, remember Bard in their wills. Um, she um, cared deeply about education and Bard's larger social mission. Uh, she'll be remembered by her classmates and fellow alumni for caring, her intelligence, and curiosity, and also her humor. Robert David Judd from the class of 1968. Lisa Moore Carrick from the class of 1967. <clears throat> Carol L. Kessler from the class of 1991. Peter Joseph Levy from the class of 1968. Richard Maris Loving from the class of 1946. Heather Jane McCormick from the Bard Graduate Center, class of 1998. She was actually one of our first students there. Irvin. Irv, apparently called Machol, from the class of 1959. Grace Markham, a graduate of the MFA program, 1992. Sanford Sandy Page Marshak, Meshark, excuse me, from the class of 1973. Antonia Meltzoff, from the class of 1960. Brian T. Moore, who was a very familiar face in shipping and receiving. Brian uh, will be remembered and missed by all. Shipping and receiving during the pandemic became a vital, vital a node of communication. Catherine Moore, uh, who worked for us in the environmental services. 
William T. Motoshiski, who also worked at Buildings and Grounds. Richard Murphy. Richard Murphy uh, retired from IBM and then joined the physics program as the lab technician. And he had an enormous practical understanding of the technology involved in physics. And uh, he helped students and repaired all the equipment. Jonathan Oskas from the class of 1952. He lived across the river at Hurley. His wife, uh, Iris Lipskar Oskas, uh, they met at Bard, again from the class of 52, and they were regular um, participants in our events here. He survived by his wife of 70 years, Iris, from the class of 52 as well. Joseph Palambo from the class of 1973. Eileen Pasloff, who chaired our dance program for so many years. She came in 1969, and she was here for 46 years. She was an unbelievably versatile. The picture you see is from her middle period, I would say, middle-late period of fascination with flamenco in a day when we deride cultural appropriation. Here was a modernist dancer of Jewish origin in New York from the radical aesthetic period of modernism in the 50s who became a proponent of a Spanish flamenco tradition with brilliance and with great admiration from her Spanish colleagues uh, to which she had no biographical connection whatsoever. One of the great powers of the arts, which is to show how universal our experiences really are. Fantastic teacher and mentor, and um, one of the great figures of the flourishing of modern dance in the generation after Martha Graham. A wonderful teacher and mentor to many students, and she's remembered here by the chair of our dance program, her successor, Jean Churchill. Tam Fan, from the class of 2005, known as Sage. He was an alumnus of the Bard Prison Initiative. He was in the first graduating class <clears throat> at Eastern Correctional, and um, he was a very um, outspoken and energetic individual in the particularly in the early years of BPI. He, after he was released, he worked at the Fortune Society and then founded a limousine service in New York. Um, he always came to reunions here at Bard and um, he loved catching up with his uh, alum, alumni friends. And um, we all remember him as singularly ambitious and um, skeptical and uh, once again, with a sense of humor, which seems to be a necessary but prevalent Bardian characteristic. Susan Playfair from the class of 1962. Uh, she was very active in the Board of Governors and the alumni. She was always on campus very frequently. And um, she had very close friends in her years. Um, uh, an unbelievably gracious and kind and generous person. She was particularly close with Penny Axelrod and Jack Blum and Anne Ho. Um, she worked on Wall Street, she had a clothing store, uh, she was an interior designer and she wrote. And she was really a person who could cheer the people around her up. And she will be greatly missed by the alumni. F. Peter Rose from the Center for Environmental Policy, class of 1993. Zelda Gale Rose from the class of 1951. Janet Sapadin from the class of 1980. And Edwina Kuhn Shar from the class of 1948. Um, Edwina then went on um, to um, uh, Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons. She became a physical therapist in 1949. And she was married for many years to Monroe Scharf, a classmate from the class of 1948, whom she met in college. Ezra Sean from the class of 1955. Now, he became a professor at, uh, of science at Hunter College. Um, and his story is, um, is a cause for optimism. At the age of 80, he re-met 
a Bardian from some classes slightly behind him, Rona K. Sean, who left in 1958. And um, uh, Kit Ellen Bogan from Glass 1952 introduced them, and he married her at the age of 80, a sign of incredible optimism. <laughs> Donald Shea, who was a tutor in the Writing Center at Bard, the Bard Early College in Manhattan, the BSEC in Manhattan, and that um, he was so struck by this experiment, which has become now 20 years old, that he established an essay competition there. And uh, every winner uh, gets a scholarship to college. Melissa Shook from the class of 1963, Duane Skip Siegler from the class of 1956, <clears throat> Ellen Judith Tabachnik from the class of 1974, Charles Taylor from the class of 1996, Tim Thompson. Tim Thompson um, was uh, truly um, a cherished and beloved member of this community. He worked in our dining services for over 20 years, and um, he was um, nominated as the staff speaker at the annual senior dinner. Um, he was unbelievably kind and um, giving to our students. Being in the food service is maybe the most taxing of jobs on an undergraduate campus. It is the most regular, consistent, and often fraught um, moment of contact between students and um, the apparatus that runs the place. Um, they're hungry, um, and the rituals and the issues of food are so sensitive that the people who serve and maintain the food service uh, are one of our most important allies in creating a healthy atmosphere on campus. Um, when he died, um, the family received over 400 cards from alumni and colleagues. And I want to welcome his widow, Christine, and his daughter, Alyssa, and members of the Bard community who worked with him here today. Donald Tober, who was a uh, long-standing donor to the Bard Graduate Center in New York. He had a weekend home in Millbrook and also supported the Bard Music Festival. Rosemary Bacchetti Vaca from the class of 1949. Charles Arthur Wagner from the class of 1980. Another legendary figure in our history, Rene Carroll Wise. Um, Rene was a student and uh, ended up marrying a member of the faculty. Um, without criticism, I may say, the late poet Theodore Weiss, who, and, who edited the Quarterly Review of Literature and then moved on to teach at Princeton, and she moved with him. She was a music major. Uh, she studied with, among others, uh, with uh, Emil Hauser, who was here teaching, um, and um, they collaborated later in Ted's career in writing. She was a terrific violinist. She was also a dancer and a gardener, and she had an unbelievable deep loyalty to the college, and uh, we were in regular contact, and she was particularly, I think, encouraged by the growth of music here on campus. Shirley Young, uh, probably the leader of the American Chinese community. Uh, her father was a, um, a legendary diplomat and figure in modern Chinese history, uh, one of the few meeting grounds between the nationalist and communist uh, forces, was president of China, actually, and a very distinguished diplomat. We organized a memorial uh, with participation by undergraduates and a film and a big event two years ago at Carnegie Hall in her father's memory. She was um, uh, one of the friends of the U.S. China Music Institute. Um, she um, was a member of our conservatory advisory board and um, was uh, really um, a pioneer. Uh, she was uh, a very 
distinguished figure in the field of banking uh, through her uh, pioneering uh, achievements as a quantitative researcher. Michael Zimmerman from the class of 1959. He was a math major. He also studied the violin with Emil Hauser and history with Xu Eliang. He, um, he actually abandoned a career in college teaching in math uh, to um, commit himself to teaching in the public schools, in mathematics in New York City. Um, he then finally made a shift to risk analysis um, using computers uh, in the private sector. And he'll be missed by many of his fellow graduates. Father of all, we pray to you for these departed alumni, alumnae, and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Collect of the Day. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favour. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And I invite all to join in with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our commute common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, Support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And may the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Dies at the old.